Good night, everyone. Thank you for joining us for AFI's first quarter 2023 conference call. I'm here today with AFI CEO, Virgilio Gibon, and Luis André Blanco, our CFO. During today's presentation, our executives will make forward-looking statements. Forward-looking statements can be related to future events, future financial or operating performance, known and unknown risks, uncertainties, and other factors that may cause AFIA's actual results to differ materially from those contemplated by these forward-looking statements. Forward-looking statements in this presentation include, but are not limited to, statements related to the business and financial performance, expectations and guidance for future periods, or expectations regarding the company's strategic product initiatives, its related benefits, and our expectations regarding the market as well, as any remaining impact from COVID-19. These risks include those more fully described in our filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission. The forward-looking statements in this presentation are based on the information available to us as of the date hereof. You should not rely on them as predictions of future events, and we disclaim any obligation to update any forward-looking statement except as required by law. In addition, management may reference non-IFRS financial measures on the scope. These measures are not intended to be considered an isolation or a substitute of the results prepared in accordance with IFRS. This presentation has reconciled these non-IFRS financial measures to the most directly comparable IFRS financial measures. Now, let me turn the call over to Virgilio Gibon, FCO, starting with slide number three. Thank you, Renata, and thanks everyone for joining us today on our first conference call related to 2023 results. We proudly present our first quarter of 2023 showing another great start for the year ahead. Since our IPO, AFIA's top line has grown more than three times, improving the resilience and differentials of our businesses. And this quarter, once again, our net revenue has jumped 25% over last year. During this presentation, I will first run through some main strategic topics, such as our performance highlights, the successful business execution within our three segments, this year guidance, some recent awards recognition, and at the end, Luis Blanco will explore our financial and operational overview. So moving now to page number four, let's start with our performance highlights. First, adjust net revenue increased 25%, reaching 709.4 million reais, followed by an adjusted EBITDA growth of almost 22% year over year, reaching 330.2 million reais with a margin of 46.5%. We also report a strong cash flow generation again of 349.4 million reais, an increase of 19% year over year, boosted by the solid operational results of the company with a cash conversion of 112% and a solid cash position of 723 million reais at the end of the quarter. Adjusted net income was 166.4 million reais in line with the same period last year, mainly due to the higher financial expense related to the new debenture issued in December 2022 and higher interest rate in the market. Moving to our operational updates of the quarter, we have reached 3,113 operating seats, an increase of over 25.5% over first quarter of 2022. With the beginning of four mice medical campuses, along with new seats in Jiparaná and Itabuna, and also the acquisition of Unicha Lagoas and Fitz. In addition, our number of undergrad medical students has reached almost 21,000, representing 18.8% growth compared to the first quarter of the previous year. We also saw great results in net revenues. For our continued education business, the segment grew more than 46.6% year over year, representing a net revenue of 34.9 million reais in the first quarter. The digital health services reported great results as well, with revenue increase of almost 20% in the comparison of first quarter 2022 and in the quarter of net revenue of 56.8 million reais. The result 
reinforce the opportunity ahead in the digital services and it explained by the ramp up on B2B engagements with new contracts with the pharmaceutical industry companies and the continuous ramp up in B2B contracts, as we will discuss further on. Lastly, our ecosystem has 295,000 active users, representing a great penetration among physicians and medical students in Brazil. In the next slide, we will talk about our solid business execution within our three business units. Starting with the undergrad segment, we saw important movements throughout the quarter, such as higher tickets in medicine course, with more than 8% increase of medicine tuition, the maturation of medical seats, the beginning of four new mice Medicals campuses in 2022, the consolidation of unit and fits acquisitions, and the consolidation of 92 new medical seats, 28 in Uni São Lucas G. Paraná, located in Rondônia, and 64 additional seats in Faculdade Santo Agostinho in the city of Itabuna. This movement is part of our strategy to add 600 new medical seats on our current operation by 2028. We are delighted to see that the most significant growth of the quarter in terms of revenue came from our continued education segment with a robust intake process, six new campuses and course maturation. On our digital service segment, we ended the quarter with a revenue increase of 20% when compared to last year. This result reinforces the opportunity ahead in digital service, and it is explained by the ramp up in the B2B engagements with new contracts with pharmaceutical industries companies and the continuous ramp up in B2B contracts. And now I will turn the call over to Luis Blanco, after CFO, to give more call on the financial operation metrics. Thank you. Thank you, Virgilio, and good evening, everyone. Starting with slide number seven to discuss the financial highlights of the first quarter. With much satisfaction, I presented another strong quarter results for AFIA. Adjusted net revenue for the first quarter of 2023 was 709 million reais, an increase of 25% over the same period of the prior year mainly due to higher tickets in medicine courses by more than 8.3%. Maturations of medical seats, the beginning of four mass medical campuses, the big business combinations with Unita Lagoas and Fit Chabotão, the strong continuing educational segment performance, and the great results of the digital service. First quarter 2023 adjusted EBITDA increasing 21.9% to 330 million reais with an adjusted EBITDA margin of 46.5%, a decrease of 120 basis points when compared to the first quarter 2022. The adjusted EBITDA margin reduction in this quarter is mainly due to the following. Consolidations of four mais, new mais Medicals campuses. Operations started on the third quarter 2022. Units and features which are performing better than expected, but still present lower margins when compared to the integrated companies. And digital segments, primarily due to med cell performance. Moving to the next slide. Adjusted cash flow generations over the year was almost 20% higher quarter over quarter, totaling 349 million reais, boosted by the solid operation results. Operating cash flow ratio was 112% for the first quarter 2023, compared to 113% in the first quarter 2022. Adjusted net income for the first quarter of 2023 was 167 million reais, in line with the same period from the previous year, mainly due to the higher financial expenses related to unit and fits acquisitions and higher interest rates. Our adjusted EPS for the quarter reached 1 real and 77 cents the same when compared to the first quarter 2022. 
our EPS performance reflected the decrease in our net income that was compensated by capital location discipline executing buyback programs. Moving to slide number nine for discussions of key operational metrics by business unit. Our number of medical students grew 19% over first quarter 2023, reaching 20.8 thousand students, with operating medical seats increasing 25%, due to the encompass of 632 medical seats related to Formais Médicos in G. Paraná, Itabuna seats increase, Unite Alagoas in Fitzgerald acquisition, as previously set. Therefore, we reached 3,163 approved seats and expect to achieve almost 23,000 undergrad medical students at maturity. Our net average ticket, excluding acquisitions, increased by 8.3% over the same period last year, reaching 8,570 reais in the first quarter 2023, compared to 7,861 in first quarter 2022. The last graph shows a 24% growth in combined tuition fees, reaching 806 million reais, up from 649 million reais from the first quarter 2022, 78% of which are related to medicine courses. All these efforts means one thing, our medical educational business remains and will continue to be the cornerstone of our business in the short and the middle terms, delivering high predictable growth combined with solid profitability and cash generation. On the next page, I will present our continual educational metrics. As said before, we saw another year of great recovery in our continual educational segments, with an increase of more than 37% in the number of students compared to the same quarter last year, reaching 4,774 students. In addition, for the quarter, Net revenues grew 47% when compared to the first quarter 2022. This recovery is mainly due to the robust intake process and course maturation. Moving to slide number 11, I will discuss the digital service operational metrics. On the first graph, you can see our total active payers, which are the ones that generate revenues in business to physicians, B2P. With a continuous growth trend, we've reached 218,000 paying users, a 24% growth compared to the same period last year. As you can see in the second graph, our ecosystem grew 13.6% compared to the previous year, achieving 295,000 monthly active users representing almost 40% of all medical students and physicians in Brazil. Finally, on our last graph, we can see our digital service net revenues, which increased more than 19% when compared to the same quarter of the last year, reaching 56.8 million reais. With the breakdown, our digital service net revenue within P2P and B2B segments, which accounted for more than 46 million reais coming from B2P and more than 10 million reais coming from B2B, since B2B strategy is still humping up, representing a growth of 62% compared to the prior year. And now, moving to my three last slides, I will discuss our cash and net debt positions also giving more color on our cost of debt. Cash and cash equivalents at the end of the first quarter were 723 million reais, a decrease of 8% over March 2022 and 34% when compared to the fourth quarter of 2022. Mainly to the new debentures issues during the fourth quarter that was used to fund 
the down payment of unit Alagoas in Fitchabotão acquisitions in January. On the next page, we can look closely to the net debt variation. In the first quarter 2023, net debt totally 2 billion and 29 million reais, an increase of 648 million reais when compared to the fourth quarter 2022, meaning to the 825 million unit Alagoas and Fit Chabotão acquisitions, which was partially offset by 177 million reais of free cash flow generations in the first quarter of 2023. On the next slide, you can see a table with the breakdown of our gross debt and the total cost of, of our debt, considering our main source of debts, the soft bank transactions, debentures, account payables to selling shareholders, and other financial ob obligations. This ends our prepared remarks. Strong performance, consistent growth, and success in all segments. We are committed to provide an ecosystem that integrates educational and digital solutions for the entire medical journey, enhancing the development, updating assertiveness and productivity of health professionals. We are very proud of our business and what we have achieved so far and excited about what we plan for the future. I will now open the conference for Q&A session. Thank you. So if you wanna ask a question, please raise your hand. The first question comes from Luca Marchesini from Itaú BBA. Luca, you may talk. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for taking our question. Uh, regarding MedCell, we've seen a decrease in the number of active payers for the past quarters. So can you please provide more color on the competitive landscape and comment if you have seen any sign of recovery here, especially considering the initiatives uh, implemented uh, in the end of last year? So that would be helpful, please. Thank you. Hi, Luca. This is Virgilio. Uh, I can start here and then Blanco can give more details after. So just about the dynamic uh, on MedCell, we are combining uh, the MedCell offering uh, on pillar one, to, pillar one together with Alenda Medicina and Cardio Papers. So we are seeing a very good uh, intake enrollments coming on Alenda Medicina and Cardio Paper, also shifting demand uh, between these offerings in the pillar one. So MedCell, as we saw uh, in the last quarter, like she on the fourth quarter, we still, still have a lower uh, volume coming uh, this year. So we are ending uh, the seasonality right now in the first quarter. So the mass cycle, the big cycle starts in September. So we still have for this semester a lower number coming uh, from itself when you compare uh, to last year. So the landscape, uh, the competition landscape is still have the same. So we still have a lot, a lot of competitors on this, uh, on this matter. That's the reason why we change not only the product, but also change the offering, combining Alenda Medicine and Cardio Papers, uh, offering much more related also for specialization. It's much more uh, online, continual medical education than only residence prep course as uh, it should, uh, it used to be uh, mid sale uh, in the past, back in 2019, 2018. Uh, just to give more figures, uh, uh, I pass uh, back to, to, to Blanco that can color a little bit about the numbers. Thank you, thank you, Virgilio. Uh, Luca, uh, as Virgilio mentions, we uh, we we end at the first quarter the the the, the intake of the collections of uh, two thousand twenty three. Uh, so all the the, the collection of twenty twenty two is disconnected during during the, the this quarter, and now the new intake will will, will take uh, a place in the fourth quarter. Uh, uh, Medcell. As we mentioned, it's, it's not a, 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 a cornerstone uh, for for our uh, business to business uh, 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 strategy, uh, and uh, we we still feel uh, comfortable that uh, uh, with this combined 
offer that we are doing uh, uh, with the prep test of MedCell within uh, uh, Cardio Papers and uh, Alinda Medicina uh, uh, content, uh, we're gonna we're gonna uh, 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 stop this the this this uh, uh, this following of uh, of uh, MedCell and and then we can. Uh, have some kind of recover during the, the next intake cycle uh, for the 2024 uh, collections that we are going to start on September. Yeah. Virgilio, you want to compliment? Yeah, just to add a, a point here. Uh, so moving forward for the following quarters uh, on the digital uh, and as the next quarter will be consolidated, it's no more, uh, it will be fully organic uh, when, you combine, when you compare uh, to the previous year. So pillar one should be moving uh, around 10 to 15% above last year. And the other uh, components of our digital services should be growing close above 30%. So the combination of them will be around something 15 to 20% uh, for the rest of the year, uh, at least for the, for the rest of the, the first half, uh, because we still have the intake uh, that will be stronger on the second half. Okay. That's very clear. Thank you, Vigido and Luis. Thank you. Okay, so our next question comes from Mauricio Cepeda from Credit Suisse. Mauricio, may go. Hi, Vigido, Blanco, Renata. Thank you. Thank you for the space here. Um, so a little bit on, on margins. I understand that uh, you are, in fact, reconfiguring the, the mix of business there. So, so we see that the margins are being a little bit lower, but for a very positive reason, right? You're ramping up a lot, continuous education. You're opening lots of medical seats. So, so my first question would be, um, how, how do you expect this to, to go on for this year in terms of, of these apparent margin pressures, which, which are in fact uh, the success of, of the businesses? And uh, thinking a little bit more f uh, further, if you see uh, uh, when, when you see basically uh, a convergence to, to, let's say, a new margin level, given that you are going, uh, we are, you're integrating uh, new operations uh, on top of the dimensional effects. Thank you. Sepeda, uh, it's Blanco speaking. Regarding the, the expectations in the year, we are, uh, uh, we are fully committed for what we have guidance guided for for the, the market uh in the first in, in, in with the, the the disclose of the the results of 2022 the margins embedded uh, uh in our guide, the guidance is between four, 40 to 42 uh, percent uh from the bottom to, to to the top line of of the guidance we are uh, we're committed with that uh remember that the first quarter is is is, is the best quarter that we, we always have due to the seasonality of our our business we have this uh a, a little bit pressure in in this in these margins caused by uh uh performance the the four new mice metrics and for the beginning of units that is coming with uh, uh, margins that were initially better than expected in the original business plan, but uh, uh, still uh, behind uh, uh, the margins of the integrated companies. If we exclude these acquisitions uh, 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 for 2023, uh, uh, the decreasing margins is just 50 bips, uh, five zero bips. So uh, the, the, uh, uh, we are pretty committed to, 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 the, to deliver the margins of these 40 to 42%. Uh, percent. Uh, uh, and as you mentioned, as uh, continuing education uh, uh, will, uh, uh, will grow and uh, the digital segment will grow uh, 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 with higher uh, rates than the, the undergrad uh, segments, uh, we're going to have some uh, kind of shifts for, for margins. But for this year, uh, the guidance is uh, between 40 to 42. Yes, Peda, we unfortunately do not give guidance for longer term, um, but there is no reason for margins in all the segments to increase in the following years. Virgilio, do you want to complement? Yeah, I think just uh, as we are growing very fast in continuum medical education in PEMED, uh, we launch uh, six new campuses. We are preparing to launch another uh, two or three campuses still this year. 
So as any other uh, on-ground operation for education, uh, we will ramp, ramp up the number of students per campuses. Uh, so gross margin will, will increase and also uh, the EBITDA margin will increase along the year. So we expect to have better contribution margin coming from continuum education for the following semester. Uh, uh, not only uh, for the, the, the legacy uh, operation, but also for uh, mainly for the new the new campuses that we launched uh, last year and also this year. Okay, that's very clear. Thank you. Just a reminder: if you want to ask a question, just raise your hand. The next question will come from Lucas Nagano from Morgan Stanley. Lucas, you may now talk. Hey, uh, good evening, all. Thanks for taking our questions. I uh, have two. The first one is uh, related to uh, your med schools. Uh, the, the situation seems still very comfortable. You, you increased price 8%, filled 100% of seats. But have you noticed any underlying change in, in the demand, for example, uh, how it evolved in the Southeast uh, versus the my magical schools uh, in terms of uh, candidates per seat or, or pricing, for example? And uh, the second question is related to B2B. Uh, it, it seems to be uh, performing well. Uh, can you tell us a little uh, which part of the product development uh, process and the commercialization process uh, you are in? And also if you could comment a little uh, if you're developing uh, solutions for uh, companies that are not uh, in the pharma industry. Yes, Lucas, uh, uh, I can take the first one here. Blanco helped me on the second one. So about the tuition adjustment, that, that was the average across the board. Uh, about the intake level, this year, uh, this year was, uh, when you compare to the last four years, was the candidate per seat ratio higher, the, the highest candidate per ratio candidate per seat that we had uh, for the last four years, uh, we are reaching around eight candidates per seat. Of course, this is on a national average, but as we have like a very integrated process, we can uh, manage uh, to have 100% of occupancy in all of, uh, uh, of our units. And of course, that we have different, uh, different ratio between our campuses. Uh, when you analyze our campuses in large cities like Unigranjillo in Rio de Janeiro, uh, we have more than 20, 25 candidates per seat. And for some uh, institutions have around four and five candidates per seat, but it's uh, pretty feasible uh, and easy to keep uh, enrolling 100% of the seats uh, every semester. So even uh, consider that we are passing uh, tuition a little bit above inflation this semester, uh, I think we are strengthening our commercial process, our enrollment process, and our capacity to convert uh, uh, students to all of our campuses. Okay. If I may add a point here, I just want to mention that we do have different prices in different regions, uh, and that's mainly because of the region, but that does not mean that we have different margins in different regions, it's because all the costs and expenses related to different regions are also different. So what I'm trying to say here in the end of the day, that ticket from a mass medical school uh, comparing to, I don't know, Unigran Rio is different. But in the end of the day, we can see similar margins. What changed the margin level is mostly how much concentrated the school is from medicine. That's what changed the game. And Blanco, may you take the second question? Yeah. Uh... Uh, Lucas, thank you. Thank you for our questions. Uh, just give you more color uh, on on the the B two B. I'll just give a step back to to give a, a more co more color in our strategy. So our digital uh, 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 strategy is focused on penetrating uh, within the physicians uh, 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 with uh, the best solutions to increase their productivity, to increase their assertiveness. Uh, and to increase their, their updating uh, 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 from topics. Uh, and we've been these channels to connect uh, uh, these physicians to the healthcare players. So we, we divided the, the digital in, this, in, in these two parts, okay? So uh, regarding the, the chain, the, 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 the companies that we, we provide this service for the physicians, we are uh, increasing a lot the, 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 use, the users, 
uh, the monthly active users and we're increasing the the uh, the payers as well uh regarding the the, the b2b uh, uh what we had uh, in place uh, until right now is the the connections that we've made uh uh, uh in a minor part with uh, other educational companies to provide solutions such as uh, our prep course medcell and our uh, 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 medicine image uh, uh, solutions that is medical hardware, uh, uh, and most part of the, the this, this digital revenues are coming from the pharmaceutical industry. We have uh, more than a hundred con uh, contracts uh, established to now, uh, with more than forty uh, uh, industry uh, pharmaceutical industry players uh, uh, right now, uh, multinationals and national nationals uh, 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 players on that. So all the B2B uh, revenues are coming for, for, for these two parts. What we have launched uh, 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 right now, we started the connections for the second uh, pillar of the, 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 the industry that is it's relevant for our uh, B2B strategy. That is the providers. So we just are uh, getting up a team uh, to do these connections and starting to, to offer the, our uh, our connections with the physicians uh, uh, to 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 the the providers uh, in the pharmaceutical industry. What we are providing right now it's what the industry call it e, e detailing. That it's marketing and commercial efforts uh, uh, to connect the, the 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 physicians with the the industry players to get their their uh, latest uh, uh, drugs, the latest. Uh, 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 treatments uh, uh, for for the physicians and for providers. We are we we are going to offer uh, recruitment service uh, and uh, uh, offering the 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 best leads uh, that can 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 come from the our ecosystem leads for for them to get the, the, the their treatment uh, buying some medicine doing their treatments or doing the exams. So that's the 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 strategy, Lucas. Very clear, Virgilio, Blanco, and Renata. Thank you very much. Well, of course. Um, so just a reminder, if you want to ask a question, please just raise your hand. The next question comes from Jessica from JP Morgan. Jessica, you may now go. Hi, um, uh, thank you for taking my questions. Uh, I have two. So first, how are medicine tickets expected to behave uh, going forward? I mean, do you expect to increase prices above inflation? Um, and do you have any updates? Uh, this is the second question. Do you have any updates uh, regarding the new Mice Magicals program? Um, thank you. Hi, Jessica. It's Blanco speaking. I'll take the first one, and Vigilio will gonna take the, the second one. Uh, uh, the first, regarding the first one, what we uh, uh, have already discussed in, in the last call is the pricing uh, uh, for the, this, far, the, this first this, this first semester. Uh, uh, we we have uh, uh, disclosed that uh, we've made uh, readjustments for the the medicine students that uh, were seven point five percent for uh, for these years, and within the ticket maturations, uh, we're gonna get something around one percent above that. So. What we delivered for for the first quarter is 8.3 percent increase in terms of uh, of uh, net net tickets, excluding excluding uh, uh, acquisitions. And just remember about our ticket dynamic. Uh, we established ticket uh, our uh, price uh, increase annually. We usually do that uh, uh, in the month of September, in the beginning of October, and we establish the the the, the price for the inflations uh, uh, that we expect for for the year. Uh, when we we take the the year from uh, the, when we did that from 2021 for 2022, we did the same 7.5 percent. Uh, we uh, uh, we were behind off the inflation of uh, 2021 because inflation uh, uh, speed up at the end of the year. Uh, and this year uh, uh, of 2022, uh, 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 the opposite has happened. Uh, uh, we established the same 7.5, but the inflation started to decrease at the end of, of, of the year. So uh, 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 that's how we do that. So next September, uh, we'll, uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we're gonna see 
uh, 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 this inflation uh, perspective for the year. We established a new pricing for 2024. And above these uh, price readjustments, we have these uh, uh, tickets uh, maturation effect that will come uh, these around of these 1%. Yeah, so just to add a, add a point um, uh, here on this question about tickets, uh, when you take a look on the table too, you also have uh, a very high incremental tuition when you consider uh, also other health programs, uh, even excluding acquisition, the, the tuition fees is jumping uh, more than 15%. So does, that's a an effect not only about price adjustment, but uh, an effect of mix, uh, much more concentrated and high value programs uh, than we had uh, in the past. So it's a good dynamic also for the year on other programs uh, besides uh, the medical programs uh, for 2023. So about the mice magicals, uh, so we are just uh, following uh, after the normative rule that they. Uh, said that they we should have to take a, a long 120 days to release what will be the new uh, the new rules for the mice medical tree or the the new wave of capacity. So it's just 60 days after uh, uh, they release that information. So we're expecting to have something by the end of July, beginning of August. Uh, they are working. They have like their commission getting together, asking the sector. Many uh, professionals, many areas participating. How should be in addressing uh, the new conditions for the the new wave capacity? But it's still early in the process uh, to have any information. Okay. Thank you. Very clear. So we do not have other questions. Thank you so much for participating with us today. If you have any follow up questions or if you want to schedule a call with us, just contact me and I will be pleased to help you guys. Have a good night and a great end of week. Thank you. Thank you all, bye-bye. Recording stopped.